Hello, my darlings. I was right now in the middle of recording the joke for this intro, which was reading every comment that said that they want a part three for this story. But uh, the intro reached the length of 10 minutes. Yeah, I was not going to upload that. Anyways, uh, before we dive right into part three, I would like to remind you to share this video around, like, or dislike and comment something down below, watch it until the end and share, 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 share it around because you may get a part four in the future. I'm not sure if I can write a part four, but maybe. Give me a little bit of encouragement, huh? Uh, also, if you want to support me more directly, I have both my Patreon and merch store links down in the description. But as I said, share the video around, like, comment, subscribe, and watch it until the end for maximum support, huh? Let's get right into it, and I hope you enjoy it. With a happy expression, you once again explored the Camino Ward shopping mall. You had just been here a few days ago, for the first time as well. But now, you were here on a date. It was a much different feeling than before. Less curiosity killed the cat, and more, I'm here with someone. Bakugo had been a rough gentleman. While he mostly had a scowl and any other person he met with hostility, directly to you, he was sweet. It reminded you of what his dad had told you about him, that he is a little hothead and that both of his parents never expected him to ask a girl out. However, despite him thoroughly enjoying this date so far, the real reason why he wanted this date as fast as possible was to get leads on the League of Villains. What he didn't know was that you weren't really a part of the League. You had no idea what they were doing. Occasionally, Bakugou looked behind himself, whenever he was sure you didn't notice. At a safe distance were Kirishima and Mina. He wasn't sure how stealthy the two were, but you still didn't notice them. Right now they were sitting on a bench, a large fountain separating you two. Is this a wishing well? You asked Bakugo, and he turned his attention back to you. Well, yes and no. You walk towards the fountain, Bakugo close behind you. In the water glimmered a large collection of coins. It isn't a wishing well, but people still throw money in it for good luck. You tilted your head as you watched the gentle waves and springs of the fountain, the water playfully waving around the glittering coins. I can see why people want to turn it into a wishing well, you said. You suppressed the urge to reach into it and grab a few coins. Instead, you did the opposite and opened your wallet. Oh, come on, don't... don't do that, grunted Bakugo with a light chuckle. But it was already too late. Gently, you had thrown in a shiny coin. You smiled. I threw it the furthest. It had almost reached the middle of the fountain's bowl. Now Bakugo felt challenged, pulling out the coin himself. <laughs> Watch this. A crackle exploded on his hand, shooting the coin across the water's surface. Your eyes widen. Is that your quirk? He asked excitedly, not even noticing that Bakugo's coin landed right next to yours. Bullseye, he thought to himself. Yeah, it is. He raised both hands and let loose tiny explosions. Does it not hurt? He asked wide-eyed. Uh, not really. At first, yes, but there's a trick to it. You tilted your head. Uh, simply put, these tiny ones are just a little hot. More show than damage, but I can do bigger ones. I designed my hero costume specifically for that. He proudly grinned at you. Wow, you said with an enchanted smile. What about yours? A 
cold shower ran down your spine. Where to next? You asked, ignoring his question entirely. Taking a bit of guard, he turned around, seemingly in thought. His eyes wandered to Mina and Kirishima. The redhead was eating a sandwich, while Mina waved towards him. Then he noticed your Nomo. The giant had been ghosting around you two the entire time, and right now he was intently staring at Bakugo's friends. Uh, food, he said with a racing heart. Oh, good. Let's pick up Nomo for that. He doesn't eat, but he still likes the taste. You paused and looked around. Where is he? You asked. You looked past Bakugo, and he turned around with a heavy feeling in his gut. If he now saw Kirishima and Mina, the entire operation was a blow. However, he sighed in relief when he didn't see them. Nomo, on the other hand, was looking around, seemingly in confusion. Bakugo chuckled. The two must have noticed the big guy and run into separate directions, confusing the monster. Happily, you skipped over to him. No more, we're going to eat something. Wanna come with? You asked innocently. No more was still looking to his left and right. He assumed the creepy pink girl and the dumb looking redhead were spying on you. But then they had kissed and walked away into a grocery store. That threw him completely off guard. You grabbed the arm of the confused monster. Come on, it'll be fun. Within minutes, the three of you had found themselves in a fast food restaurant. The only one in the mall's food court you could actually enter and order in instead of just getting the food presented on a tablet and then go find a place to sit. It seemed to be a burger chain, as Bakugo knew exactly what he wanted. I don't know what to get. You had whispered to your date. He had simply shrugged and ordered you chicken tendies and some fries. You quickly found a table for the three of you and happily began eating. Bakugo was strangely quiet until you noticed. He kept glancing at Nomo. The monster was staring at the wall, unblinking. You knew he was just happy to be here, but still an intimidating sight. With a gentle smile you pulled out your phone and winked at Bakugo. Hey, watch this. You unlocked it and quickly typed in the name of a kid's show you liked. No more. Remember the yellow pony? You asked while giving him your phone. His lips twitched. Yes, you remember the yellow pony. You clicked play. Me like pony. The monster grunted. Yes, you like pony. You pointed into the kid's play corner. Why don't you watch the show there? I'll be right here in earshot. Pony, mumbled Nomu as he stood up and slowly walked into the kids' play aisle, phone in hand. The children seemed delighted, climbing all over him instead of playing in the ball pit, while your monster intently stared at your phone screen. Bakugo grinned. What? he asked with a smile. I don't know if this was the cutest thing I've ever seen, or the most terrifying. <laughs> Why don't we settle on cute? You chuckled. Mina and Kirishima now entered the restaurant. With the way Bakugo had suggested you two would sit, you had your back turned to the entrance. His two friends went to order, while Mina constantly seemed to fidget. Something was off with them, he just couldn't put his finger on it yet. So, how is the hero life? You asked. Bringing the explosive blonde back to reality. Uh, guess it's fine. I'm still learning. You leaned forward, hands propped under your chin. How do you learn being a hero? Don't you just beat up villains and stuff? He sighed heavily. Yeah, but... As it turns out, in a world where everyone could do anything, learning different strategies is key. He nibbled on a fry before continuing. Besides, I'm going to a high school, 
Education is key. If you want to survive as a hero in a world of heroes, I mean, think about it. In manga, it's usually one hero for an entire planet of baddies. But nowadays, it also has a lot to do with paperwork and licenses and all that stupid crap. You sighed. <sighs> so you aren't really a hero anymore. He frowned. What do you mean? We still do heroic things. We save people daily. You shook your head. That's not what I mean. A hero doesn't need a stupid license or dumb paperwork. A hero is supposed to run into a burning building and save people. It isn't about a flashy costume or fame. It's about doing what's right. You looked at him. Are you in it for the fame? The heroics? Or to save people? He blinked. And blushed. You tilted your head. Something wrong? His heart began to raise. I, uh... What was this feeling? Sorry if I offended you. Uh, I... He began. I think I'm falling for you. You blinked. It took you a moment to work through what he just said. Then you too blushed and giggled. <laughs> You're cute, you said with a smile. He bit his lower lip. And you. Oh man, is it hot in here? Your eyes widened and your heart seemingly stopped for a beat as a feeling of horror overcame you. Uh, e excuse me for a moment. You stuttered and quickly rushed to the bathroom. Confused, the blonde looked after you. Even Nomo seemed to have noticed. Slowly the giant stood up, with a child still climbing on his back. The Nomo walked over to Bakugo. Lady Hurt. You hurt lady. He accused you. I don't even know what I said, growled Bakugo at the monster, too concerned about you to be afraid of him. Nomo would have attacked the blonde right this moment if it hadn't been for your order. Don't ruin this for me, protect me, don't attack him, I'm a big girl now. That's what you said. So the monster had to get creative. Then he thought about his pony show and got an idea. What you say to a lady? He croaked. I don't know. I just said I like her. Okay. She's cute and... He looked over at Kirishima and Mina. The two were too focused on conversing with each other to even notice you having fled. He looked back at Nomu. Look, I don't know. The monster blinked. His brain hurt whenever he had to think, and he hated it. And it took him a minute before he said, You, Lady Hurt, you fix. Bakugo blinked. <clears throat> Be a hero. Bakugo suppressed a groan. He had just been convinced by that thing to do his job. With a metaphorical tail between his legs, he marched over to the toilets. Hey, I apologize, ladies, but I gotta go in here for a moment. Uh, if you're too embarrassed, just stay in your stupid cubicles or something. I gotta talk to my girlfriend. G girlfriend? You thought as you heard his voice shout into the room. You had been quietly sobbing in one of the toilets for the past five minutes, convinced you were about to kill him. There's no one here. You stuttered as tears ran down your face. Your thing told me whatever I said was my fault. And, well, whatever I said, I'm sorry. You gotta admit that was 
quite the quick turn, huh? You shook your head. No, I'm sorry. I was about to kill you. You cried. Bakugo looked back towards the door. Nomu was blocking the entrance, but in reality he just didn't fit for the hole. The monster was looking at him, and after realizing he was waiting for him to do something, the Nomu just shrugged. Very helpful, Thomas, he thought. Look, what... what did I say? You sniffled. <laughs> you said you were hot. Bakugo blinked. It took him all his composure to not start laughing. His blooming feelings for you and a mad giant being the only reason that kept him quiet. What do you mean? It's my quirk. Nomo made a noise somewhere between a grunt and a shout. Now he finally understood. But Bakugo still didn't get it. It's just a saying. What does it have to do with your quirk? You looked up at the closed door of the cubicle and sniffled. <laughs> Not in here, you said meekly. The blonde understood. <sighs> All right. Gather your thoughts. I'll be waiting outside with your uh, pet servant. Uh, no more, I mean. Ten minutes later, you were sitting on a bench near the fountain. Bakugo was sitting next to you, while Norma was somewhere, but probably close by. So, what was this about? Bakugo spoke up. Concern was in his voice. You'd be lying if you said you didn't like it. My quirk. You said after a deep inhale. It's called Red Empress. My dad gave it the name after... You looked down at the ground in shame. After it killed my mom. You paused, wiping away a tear. I can increase a person's body temperature and blood pressure until... Your eyes widen in horror at the memory. And Bakugo wrapped an arm around your shoulder. It's fine, you don't... Until they pop! You finished. Like putting a hamster in a microwave, Bakugo thought. It's like putting a hamster into a microwave. You said. There it is, thought Bakugo. I don't know what activates it. I don't know how to turn it off. I only know I almost killed my stepbrother Tomor out of it. The creep was your stepbrother? Thought Bakugo with a mild shock. He screamed in pain and then ran away when it activated. And I think he left my quirk's range before he died from it. Gently, Bakugo's hand caressed your back. I'm sorry, Bakugo. This was a dumb idea. I I'm sorry. I'm gonna go home. You said while jumping up. No, wait. He spoke up before you could take another step. Slowly, you turned towards him, and he took your hands in his, looking into your eyes. It's fine, he said. You looked away. Listen to me. What he was going to say now took all of his courage. If he was more honest with himself, the only reason he had been so rough to anyone but you all day was out of nervousness, and his wish to look tough around you. I don't care what you did in the past, and I understand that you didn't mean what you did in the past. 
You didn't know. It was an accident. You still looked away from him. And you said you were feeling hot. The image of her came back. He bit the inside of his lower lip. Hard. He could only imagine it from the description of your quirk. Bakugo needed to do something quickly, or he would lose his own composure. So he did the only thing that felt right to him. His hands let go of yours, while his arms moved down your hips. Gently he pulled you closer. Your face squished against his chest, and you blushed. You could hear his heartbeat against your ear. Soft. Rhythmic. Not like the panic beating of your mother's before you killed her. And not like the nothing of your father or Kurogiri. And not random, like the beating of Nomus. It felt like a lullaby. It felt safe. When he finally let go of you, both of you were blushing like tomatoes. See? He said, while giving an embarrassed chuckle. I'm still here. You spent the rest of the day with Bakugo, not thinking about your past. Trying to enjoy the moment to its fullest. And when it was time to say goodbye, he even kissed you gently on your forehead. With flushed cheeks, he watched you go on a train with your big monster guy, and you waved each other goodbye, with a promise of reunion. He had a girlfriend now, he thought. And what a treasure she was. With a happy smile, he left the station. Meanwhile, Kirishima and Mina were rushing through the mall. Where is he? Where are they? shouted the pink-skinned girl. Oh no, I was lost in your stupid eyes! Mina growled. Stop trying to be romantic, what if he got kidnapped? She paused and blushed. Again! I'm sure he's fine, grunted Kirishima. Look... He pulled out his phone. A text message from Bakugo read, When you two are done, meet me at the station, I'm waiting. Mina sighed in relief. Uh, so what now? The shark-toothed idiot grinned. Neither of them had planned to turn this spy operation into a date, but he had happily accepted it. Well, I got a couple of quarters left. Why don't I win you something at the claw game over there, and then we pick up Katsuki? The girl smiled. <laughs> Get me the pink unicorn. Kishima chuckled. All right, I'll try. <laughs>